Hello and welcome back to yet another revision video. Now, when it comes to English language paper two, which is gonna be your final set of exams, in terms of this exam, the main challenging aspect is you basically need to do double the work in exactly the same amount of time that you've got for language paper one. You've got to read two extracts, you've got to compare both extracts of question two and four, and of course, you also have a fairly challenging question number five, where you've either got to write letter, speech, or article. So, Mr. Sales and I will be presenting our own approaches when it comes to language paper two, because we know that different students have different learning styles, and then it's down to you to select which one you prefer. So let's go over yeah. the language paper two structure. Now, I think question number one is actually quite straightforward. It's a multiple choice question, and you're asked to usually look at source A. Now, from my perspective, I think when you are answering this multiple choice question where you're simply shading in the circles, you simply just make sure you don't look at the wrong line numbers. Keep your answer to just five minutes before you move on. I completely agree with all of that. In fact, I don't ever stress about question one because just like in paper one, the average mark is 3.5. Everybody gets nearly all of the marks. So just settle into the exam, relax and enjoy. Now for question number two, which is your first comparison question, so the level of difficulty goes up significantly. This question is worth eight marks, but you've got to work really hard for these eight marks because you've got to write a summary of either similarities or differences between the two texts that you were presented. Now for question number two, which is a summary, my suggestion is aim to write at least two pill paragraphs where within each paragraph you were comparing both source A and source B, either are they similar or are they different? However, given this is a summary question, it's not where you need to talk about language or structure. Keep it simple, so you say text one and text two, this is either similarity or difference, evidence to support that, then you explain it and link it back and you just do it two times. So my channel, as you probably know, is aimed at people getting the top grades, so my advice is slightly different. Um, you have to make your comparisons, but I try to train my students to write in P sentences rather than P paragraphs. So you'll give the writer's perspective and some evidence in the same sentence. That means you can make four comparisons instead of two. And I recommend four comparisons for all eight marks. However, it's only worth eight marks and you have to read both texts for it. So there isn't a universe where I would want to do question two before question three, because question three, you only have to read one text and there are 12 marks. So I'm gonna go in with question three after question one, because I know I'm gonna get more marks and there's less reading to do. Uh, and then when I do question two, I'll already know one text really well. Okay, and that leads us to question number three. Now with question number three, you only need to look at one extract, so it comes as a little bit of a relief. Usually, you're asked to look at the modern source, however, there have been some past paper questions that have asked you to look at language use in the Victorian source. Whichever it is, just remember that question number three tests your awareness of language, things like alliteration, metaphors, similes, and so on. My suggestion for this question, as it's worth 12 marks, is write three pill paragraphs, mentioning within each paragraph a language observation. So, Again, it's 12 marks. How are you going to score the points? Most students will really like the idea of writing peel paragraphs because it's really familiar to you. But when I read exam answers, they often don't get really high grades because students just don't write enough. They tend to think a paragraph is like a massive effort, and so they don't write many. And so instead, I, rec I recommend thinking of this as points. I need to make 12 separate points in order to get 12 marks. You don't need 12 quotations because you might have two interpretations of the same quote, but you need 12 explanations and however many quotations to get to those explanations. It's a tough one because you've just got to write like crazy. In fact, most of my revision would be, can I write really fast? I know that sounds mad because it's an English exam, but that's the way it is. Now for question number four, this is, I would argue, the most challenging question. Yeah. Primarily because you've got to compare two sources, also talk about writers' perspectives, and equally make sure you are mixing in some language and structure points, okay? So this is the question relating to writers' perspectives. Are they similar? Are they different? Now, for this question, my suggestion would be aim to write 
three comparison pure paragraphs where in your opening point you're talking about both sources in your evidence you're adding evidence from both sources in your explanation you're talking about either language or structure observations from both sources before you link back to the question referring back to both sources you do this times three so that is super advice and again i think that's uh, more easy to follow than the advice i'm going to give you so if you're after the very top grades you've got to think well, there are 16 marks here. How am I going to get all 16 marks? You, you need to come up with all those explanations again. And that's really, really hard. When I polled my YouTube viewers, I gave them um, an exam answer that had already been marked. And I asked them to give it a mark between 9, 10, 11 and 12 marks. It was worth 10 marks. Uh, no, sorry, it was worth 11 marks, and only 14% of viewers were able to mark it correctly. And the reason for that isn't because viewers are stupid, it's because it's really difficult to mark. So if only 14% of viewers can work out what's going to get the marks, you really need a method. And I've racked my brains to find a method, and I'm embarrassed. I am embarrassed by this method, but it's this. On average, whatever grade you're writing, you get one mark for every 26 words you write. And I've tested that with loads of answers. And so if I've got 16 marks, I've got to write 26 words 16 times, trying to put my explanations into each 26 words. It's mad, but the more you write, the more points you get. So on balance, it's probably easier to think about just doing it in paragraphs. Okay. <laughs> now for question number five, which is worth half of the overall paper's marks. You were asked to write a piece of non-fiction writing. It's either going to be a letter, an article or a speech. Of course, in addition to making sure you allocate half of the exam time to this, okay, so a minimum of 45 to 50 minutes on this, my approach is firstly make sure you are clear on the form of each. When it comes to letter, make sure you start with your address, date, dear, you write your main points, right, so make sure you write Three main points in support of your perspective, two counter arguments before you finish off by concluding your discussion and then ending with kind regards, your name and surname. When it comes to an article, start off with the headline, then your opening paragraph should be setting out your argument, then you have your first subheading which introduces your main points, so at least three main points for your perspective, then a second subheading with two points against your perspective, so counter arguments, before you have your concluding discussion. That's for an article. However, for a speech, when it comes to a speech, make sure you show an awareness of your audience, starting off with either ladies and gentlemen, if it's just a general grown up audience, or fellow students, if you're writing your speech for other students in your year group, then a speech is actually quite simple because you just have your first paragraph setting out your discussion, then your three main points in support of your perspective, two counterpoints, why people will disagree with you, before you finish off by thanking your audience. Now, of course, within all three, so letter, article, speech, make sure you include anecdotes, made up examples, and statistics. I'm exhausted with that. <laughs> so I agree with all of that, but I know, I do, I mean, this is genuine, I know if I go into the exam, I'll forget that. And so I have to come up with a simpler method. It's not necessarily a better method, but the kind of learner I am, I know I need something simple that's just going to help me. So, whatever the style of writing is, almost doesn't matter. The examiners don't really care, because the mark scheme is the same, whichever one of those you do. So you only need to think about getting the right form of um, genre here, really in your first line. Your first line will tell you whether it's a speech or a letter, and that's the only kind of decoration you need to do to your writing to say, I'm doing this particular genre. The rest of it is just, I'm just going to persuade you. I'm just going to try and persuade you as best as possible. So, I've got Mad Father's Crotch. These are 15 different persuasive techniques that top persuasive writers use. Metaphor, alliteration, direct address, facts, anecdote, triplets, hyperbole, emotive language, repetition, simile, contrasting pairs where one thing is like this but the other thing is like that, Rhetorical question, opinion, contrasting pairs, or have I done that already? Creating an enemy, and humour. I practice this in 15 minutes because there are only 15 of those. So I sit down with a title and I'll go, right, first minute I'm going to write as much as I can, I must include a metaphor. Next minute I'm going to write as much as I can, but I must include alliteration. And so on. After 15 minutes I've got something that's packed 
full of persuasive techniques. First time I do that, it's not so awesome because it's difficult to write about the same thing in this artificial order. But once I've done that like three times, using these techniques just becomes second nature. And three times is 45 minutes revision. That 45 minutes revision will add at least one grade, probably two. Get cracking, check out your mad father's crotch. <laughs> Yeah. Are we done? Yeah, man, that was just so hard. What a day, man. You are so stressy. I just don't know how I cope with this. Oh, anger. What? It's a real pleasure. You can't hear it. <laughs> Thank you for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed this video. Now, if you were curious to see the video that Mr. Sally's and I made looking at English language paper one, make sure you head over to his channel where we're gonna be going over that together.